the bulk of trading at the Nairobi Securities Exchange is literally just centered around Safaricom on one hand and the country's listed financial firms, most of those being banks. Now, when the smoke finally did clear from this disastrous three-year experiment with capping retail lending rates, large banks were the big winners. In the last 12 months, the best performing stock has been the country's largest bank by assets, KCB, with a 46% price gain. Equity Bank, the number two in the market, wasn't far behind, up 43.6% in the last 12 months. Now, banks made up half of the top 10 performing stocks at the NEC over that time frame. But the story cuts in the opposite direction too. Mid-tier lenders like DTB have seen their stock price fall by over 20%. So this disastrous experiment has effectively divided bank stocks into two. Innovators with large, relatively cheap deposit bases on one hand and everybody else. But should you be bullish on Kenyan bank stocks, even as economic growth slows down? I explore that argument with Mwafi Kalonzo from EFG Hermes. So if you are a large bank with low cost of funding, i.e. a big deposit base, so that's KCB, Equity, Core Bank, you know, a large branch network if you want to call it that, those banks were able to actually use that opportunity to increase their efficiencies. And perhaps the greatest product that came out of that was Equitel. So the, the equities push into mobile lending and, and that sort of product. And that means that the cost of going to a bricks and mortar branch went down. So now we've got some of the larger banks who have positioned themselves. And, not, and I think some of the smaller, more nimble banks also digitized as well. The ones who really were pinched were if you had a bad credit book, so you had high NPLs, and also you had high costs. So in the old regime, high interest rates to your borrowers were covering for your high cost base. So you could not lend at a lower cost base, and that's what happened. Whereas if your equity bank and your cost of funding is 2%, even if you're lending at 13, you're still making money. But if your cost base is 10% of your costs of funds, then you can't lend at 13%. Does that, that then raises this really interesting picture because looking at the, the NPL numbers that usually come out of the central bank mm. every, every, every time they have a, a monetary policy committee meeting like they will in another fortnight, mm. the, the thing that's stuck out for me is always the fact that NPLs are very sticky. Mm. The average, the net number is around 12%. But yes. then if you drill down to individual banks, the big guys, the KCBs, the equities and so on and so forth, they're in single digits, mm. which suggests that the NPL problem is concentrated much lower down in the other banks. So KCB, even if they have an NPL ratio of five, because of the size of the book, will always skew the number than, say, a small bank with an NPL of 20, and you saw that. So the biggest change in the industry will come as the big, the big players, the three big banks, uh, actually four big banks now, you've got NCBA, as those start to see their credit portfolios improve, then you see NPLs coming down. But historically, yes, you have seen a very sticky NPL ratio. And, and, I, and I think, you know, there are legacy banks that have legacy issues, which will take some time to fix. You know, obviously, KCB has taken over National Bank. which And that was actually my next question. I mean, we're not a fan. We were never a fan of the transaction. We thought that uh, it was expensive. But, you know, in an in environment where rate caps have gone, it starts to make sense. KCB has recapitalized it with $5 billion, which was less than we were fearing. We thought that... Uh, there'd be a bigger number. So clearly it shows maybe National Bank didn't have a portfolio that was as bad as we feared. What about the, the equity atlas tomorrow on? Because it seems, at least at face value, some of the countries that they're jumping into either are, for lack of a better word, let me use this, they're lemons, mm. Tanzania, mm. Uh, not exactly growing rather quickly, private mm. sector growth has been taking a hit. Zambia, possibly ground zero for mm. a debt meltdown across sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, the Currency has essentially created by over 20% yes. last year. Uh, incomes, of course, are taking a hit as well. Um, and the other countries too. It, is this a wise transaction for equity? What's you in know, it for them? It's a very good question. And all of us have scratched our heads and tried to come up with an answer. Now, there's one thing we know for sure, that Equity Bank is very well run with a very strong management team who have a very strong culture and way of running banks. So the assumption here is that they've obviously maybe found assets they thought were cheap where they can essentially parachute their way of running a bank into a situation and improve it. Now, whether Atlas Mara is the right vessel for that, that's a big question because Atlas Mara, as we know, is a troubled business and hasn't really succeeded and has always been subscale in the right markets. For example, they were not in Kenya, Nigeria, they were in a very small way, but that's not part of the transaction. Mm -hmm. And the macro in these countries they're going into is, is, is very difficult. Zambia yeah. is extremely difficult and has been for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Tanzania at one point was a bright spot, but the macro is extremely difficult. 
Though, you know, we are seeing some investors start to take contrarian bets on Tanzania. You know, there is a, a theory out there that what Magufuli has done is taken the pain up front. So assuming, you know, money flows back into EM and, and risk aversion is not as high as it is right now, maybe Tanzania comes out of this in a good position. I think the DRC transaction, on the other hand, which is separate, is a very positive deal. I mean, DRC is... Uh, it's a very interesting place. It's a dollarized country with very high returns, and they've done very well on their previous transaction in DRC. So they've proven that Uganda was a painful entry for Equity Bank. DRC was a, less, was a very profitable entry now. So